Ah, Sanctuary, it's good to be back. Adventuring through Diablo's bleak, harrowing and evil infested world in the recent alpha was just the respite I needed from our own bleak, harrowing and evil infested world. <clears throat> anyway, after spending a dozen or so hours with it, I can report that Diablo Immortal is absolutely a game to watch this year. It's great, a proper, girthy new entry in the series, and not, as some feared, a watered down mobile lookalike. My enemies fall before me. Here's why. Diablo Immortal's moment-to-moment -moment combat feels awesome. Sure, I'm not quite hitting enemies so hard their skeletons are ripped off their flesh. Well, not yet, anyway. But the action feels potent and weighty right from the start. And crucially, while I've never liked using virtual analog sticks or virtual buttons, Diablo Immortal's touchscreen controls work well. The positioning of all the skills feels really intuitive, and being able to aim skills separately to moving is super useful. The skill system is more streamlined in general too, with class-based resources out and cooldowns in. The result is fast-paced combat with a compelling rhythm. Having three regenerating health potions on hand is also helpful for when things inevitably escalate. In addition to leveling your character in Diablo Immortal, you can also rank up your items. Simply salvage unwanted gear and use the materials to make your primary gear better. I love this system because it means you can use that sweet legendary drop for longer. It grows in power as you do. And better still, ranks are basically gear independent. Find a sweet axe to replace your hammer? When you go to equip it, you can transfer the ranks from your old hammer across. This system means that unwanted gear has real value and that you're basically always making loadout progress even if you haven't found superior loot in a while. Oh, and speaking of loot, I don't think I've ever spent less time in my infantry in a Diablo game. The model uses a power rating system and it's really useful, particularly in the early game, as you can quickly equip anything with an up arrow and leap back into the fray. Skills in Diablo Immortal can't be modified with runes the way they are in Diablo 3, but they can be impacted via legendary items. Open's Many Fingers, for instance, gives the Chain Spear skill two additional spears, making it significantly more effective. It's a clever way to let the loot drops encourage players to mix up the skills they use, and I enjoyed adapting my playstyle to the legendary items I came across. There's a lot of scope for customization across the 13 item slots too. These are divided into six primary items, six secondary items, and one charm. Primary items can only be socketed with legendary gems, and these all have build-altering abilities, making for some appetizing possibilities. Secondary items, meanwhile, are slotted with regular gems, and like previous games, all gems can be upgraded for extra punch. The last piece of the puzzle is the Paragon system, which kicks in when you reach max level, and has multiple skill trees to unlock and switch between depending on your build's focus. I can't wait to see a character all the way through to this. Diablo Immortal's game world is detailed, moody and immersive. Small touches abound, whether it's the people working the bellows at the smithy, or subtle environmental details that make the world feel more real and lived in. More than that though, I'm enjoying seeing the choices the team has made in setting this game apart from previous titles. I love the realism of the character art for instance. The portraits are just so serious and often kind of severe. It really seems to speak to the hardships these people have endured. Thank you for your visit. I also love how badass the gear looks. Even early on, my character was a sight to behold on the inventory screen. It's not just the level of detail either, it's the use of colour. It's really vibrant. It's been a while since Diablo 3 came out, of course, but just have a look at the difference. Set between the events of Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction and Diablo 3, Immortal has a lot to offer long-term Diablo fans. The overall story is driven by the quest to find still powerful shards of the Shattered World Stone, which a demon named Skarn, the Herald of Terror, wants to use to resurrect Diablo. For me though, it's the return of iconic characters like Deckard Kane or Charcy. Wow, you're a barbarian, huh? Or memorable bosses such as the Skeleton King and the Countess that gets me most excited. It's also just cool seeing how familiar locations have been reinterpreted. 
I also adore how many iconic sound effects are in the mix here. If you've ever heard loot flipping through the air in Diablo 2, or you've hoovered up a health globe in Diablo 3, you'll be right at home. Diablo Immortal very much has a main quest line to follow, but there's an awful lot to do beyond just beelining for that next objective. Diablo Immortal's main city hub, Westmarch alone, is home to a bunch of options. Elder Rifts, for instance, are short, randomised dungeons that are a race against the clock and can be run over and over again. What keeps them interesting is the fact that you can spend up to three crests to add random modifiers to a run. These can be both good and bad, and the higher value the crests are utilised, the better the bonus reward. All players in a party share the benefits of any crests used too. Challenge Rifts are another bite-sized activity and have a similar sense of timer-based forward momentum to Elder Rifts. The difference, however, is that you start out at difficulty level 1 and work your way through a seemingly never-ending set of higher difficulty tiers. Each new difficulty level has a reward attached and there's a leaderboard to fight for a place on as well. If you'd prefer to stay out in the world, you can always head to the Bounties board. Each day, you can complete up to 12 bounties with 4 active at a time, and these are all short challenges that are quick to beat. They're generally quick to reach too, thanks to Diablo Immortal's sweet auto-navigation functionality. Just set an objective, whether that's simply heading to the blacksmith or taking on a bounty out in the wild, and let your character get there on their own. This feature is great because it lets you get straight to the thing you want to be doing. Each zone has a recommended level incidentally, so all these activities help give you ways to make the need to grind out levels fun as opposed to frustrating. One of the player base's biggest concerns around Diablo Immortal is the fact that it's free to play. Will it be pay to win? Will it have an energy system? How about paid XP boosts? The good news is the answer is no to all of that. There are no gameplay roadblocks tied into Diablo Immortal being free to play. You can play every class, take on every mission and subquest, find every piece of loot, and max out all your characters without spending a cent. That said, Diablo Immortal will of course have numerous ways to spend money for those so inclined. The monthly battle pass, for instance, unlocks a second reward track that will help boost the number of crests, gems, honor, and other resources that you have to play with. Take note, however, that the legendary weapon unlock you can see here is on the free track. The team's policy is that all gear has to be earned, so you can't pay for items and can only attain them through gameplay. In the time I spent playing Diablo Immortal, I felt no need or pressure to spend money. This game has an awful lot of compelling gameplay and content for free, and all future content will also remain free, whether it's new gear, areas, features, or even classes. The proof will be in the playing, of course, but at this point, the real money options seem like they won't be necessary to enjoy Diablo Immortal, but instead will be a nice bonus for those that are already in deep. Personally, I can't wait for my next chance to play, so here's hoping for a beta soon. Diablo Immortal is shaping up to be the perfect way to take this iconic series on the road, and that's something to be excited about. If you're curious about Diablo Immortal, why not re-watch the original announcement trailer, or check out these class intros. And for everything else, stick with IGN.